Just got to Joe Rogan's spot. We parked in a spot we think is legit. Yeah. But anyway, I'm kind of I'm pretty excited. Yeah. I'm pretty excited. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. Um, I feel like the most awkward part is always the meeting part, because you don't you're trying to vibe it right and yeah. get on the same frequency and shit. So hey, I don't know if to hit, hey hey Joe or if it's like a hey what's up man. I think it would be more of a hey Joe. You just be yourself, shit. Like yeah, that's true. Exciting shit and let him yeah. be his, how he's gonna be. Yeah, I don't want to overthink it. <laughs> nah, don't. Good thing we showed up like an hour and a half early though. Yeah, so we don't have <laughs> enough time to overthink, overthink shit. <laughs> but anyway, TYT was fun yesterday too. Yeah, that was. Um, it felt a little surreal, you know. Felt a little surreal. I mean, I did a show with Jank in New York once before, but I guess being in their studio, it was like a different vibe to it. Mm-hmm. I met I met Anna. I never I didn't meet her in New York. She's really cool. Um, Haas. Haas was cool. Um, Jr. is the man. Very friendly, very welcoming. More than willing to help with everything. And um, Jank Jank kind of threw me uh, into the deep end and said, "Swim, bitch," because. I was. I thought me and him were gonna split up the first hour mm-hmm. in terms of giving the stories, and he was like, "All right, uh, we did the production meeting, and at the end they were like, all right, I gotta go to a meeting.' <laughs> so he left, and it was just it was on me. They handed me a stack of fucking papers like this deep, mm-hmm. and they were like, the first two articles weren't even the articles that we were supposed to cover. So I felt overwhelmed. I was like. You just gave me a stack of papers. The first two fucking articles are not the right articles. And now you want me to craft a show from this. But then once I actually started doing the work and prepping it like it was my own show. um, Like, for example, they have slides that they read their stuff off of. I said, I don't even fucking want the slides. I'm going to prep it like it's my show. And when I did it and I made it my own, it ended up working out perfectly. Yeah. So um, it was a lot of fun. A little overwhelming. A long but, day, but, I thought. But I mean, Yeah, man. We were tired at like fucking... 8 o'clock at night, we felt like it was 11. And it's rough. You guys, I mean, go on air for a while, and I was sitting in the production room watching, and I was hungry. Like, did you get hungry? Or, like, I mean, like, um, no. you going straight for a while. No. Um, when I feel like when it's kind of like a high-pressure situation like that, mm-hmm. my stomach, like, shuts down. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, um, you know, it's just, that's the last thing on my mind is, is thinking about food. Yeah. But also... Um, yeah, they kept me the over. They kept me overtime shit. for the for the post game. Yeah. The post game went for like a fucking hour. Um, I was supposed to do Jimmy Dore show, but it didn't work out because they Tyt kept me so fucking long. Yeah. Um, but I'll work it out with Jimmy. We'll do something uh, very soon. Wanted to see him today, but he's going to be super busy with election coverage and stuff. So we'll figure something out. Overall, good day. We'll give mm-hmm. you a recap on Rogan's shit after. Yeah. We'll be talking to Joe Rogan soon. I was just telling Corin, this is going to make Joe feel old if he ever sees this. But um, I remember being like a little kid watching Fear Factor. And like, I was so little that my mom, I think, would be like, it's almost your bedtime. Like, so I would finish watching Fear Factor and then I'd go to bed. I'm this little ass kid. And like, I was watching Joe Rogan on fucking Fear Factor when I was this little ass kid. And now me and him are about to have a conversation about like politics and the world and all this shit and it's like what a weird thing we live in like it feels like we live in a fucking simulation or something yeah it's like, awesome, i would have never yeah. guessed that who the fuck would have guessed that yeah it's I like w- when a basketball player like is eight years old and has a kobe bryant poster on the wall not that like you idolized him but you watch a show right no i get your point 100 of okay. course and there's that happens a lot like there, in fact not to bring up tiger woods like i do all the time but i'm gonna bring up tiger woods like i do all the time <laughs> There was a, he played on Sunday at this most recent tournament with a kid who's 21 years old. Tiger, I think, is 42 now. He's double that fucking kid's age. Yeah. When Tiger won his first major, that kid was, I don't even know, he was not even a year old. <laughs> so, and, and I think that kid actually beat Tiger on that day. Yeah, I think So it's like, too. this is crazy. The, yeah. I don't know. It's just weird, man. Yeah. Life is just weird. But anyway, um, we'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Peace.